Hi, science people. My name is Heidi Hesserich, and today I have a video for you that's going to teach you all about solutions and concentration and how to calculate concentration. In this video, you're going to learn terms like solute and solvent and learn what a solution is and what concentration is, as well as how to calculate it. And I'll end with an activity that you can do right at home to show your understanding of these concepts. If you don't already have the handout that goes with this video, it's in the description. So just read down below, print yourself a copy of the handout if you can, so you can take notes. And if you can't print it, just go ahead and save it to your computer because I think it's really helpful to take notes as you watch to process the information. So first, what is a solution? What makes a solution a solution? A solution is a mixture that's mixed evenly. So this is sitting right on my table. This is a great example of a solution. Um, we think of liquids when we think of solutions generally, but they're not always liquids. I'll give you some other examples. But this is mostly going to be water, and then it has some other things in it. It has coloring, it has a scent to it, it has cleaning agents in it. And what makes it a solution is that those things are all mixed evenly together. Now there's a term, another term for solutions, and that's homogeneous mixtures. So homo means the same, and it means it's the same all the way through. You can't see individual layers or components, it's just mixed evenly. So make a note that it's homogeneous and it is a mixture of at least two things, sometimes a lot more than two things. So now I've come to my kitchen to show you some simple examples of mixtures. On my counter, you'll see some coffee. I brew my coffee and then I stick it in the fridge. So this is coffee that will turn into iced coffee because it's hot. And this is a mixture because it's mostly water, but I've run it through coffee beans. And so there are little bits of coffee all through it. Uh, it's mixed evenly. We can't see the coffee bits and that's what makes it a solution. Now we have some milk and technically milk is a little different from a typical solution. Um, but it's pretty close. So it's mostly water, but there's also protein in there. You can say we get, re you can see that my family gets reduced fat, um, but that does mean there's some fat in there. They've, they have some omega-3 fatty acids. There are some sugars in milk as well, uh, protein. So it is a mixture. And when I pour myself a glass of milk, I can't see the different component parts. Now I've come outside. Maybe you can see those little birds on my bird bath, but that water in the bird bath is also a mixture. It's mostly water, but there are some minerals in it, some chlorine, because it came from my hose. And at this point, there are little bits of particles from off the birds, maybe even a little bit of poo. Um, the, you can see a little bit of green possibly, so some algae is getting dissolved in there, so that's a mixture. And water is a mixture if you're drinking it from a water bottle or from the tap, unless it's distilled water 100%, then it has other things mixed into it. So now I'm at my hummingbird feeder and I've scared the birds away, but I make a sugar water solution to give to the hummingbirds. It's one cup of sugar, or I'm sorry, it's a half a cup of sugar with two cups of water. So one part sugar for every four parts of water. And it mixes evenly. I heat it on the stove until the sugar is totally dissolved. So this is another example of a solution because you can't see the sugar separate from the water. So far I've shown you liquids and that's what most people think of when they think of solutions. But all around you every day there's a solution that we depend on for life. And that's the air around us. So the air around us is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then some trace gases like uh, there's a little bit of argon, there's carbon dioxide, there are some little tiny particles in the air, there's a little water vapor, but air is a solution because all of those gases are mixed evenly. You've probably never thought of a knife as a solution, but this is a stainless steel knife, and stainless steel is a mixture. I looked it up and it contains chromium, silicon, nickel, carbon, nitrogen, manganese, and we can't see those individual elements. They're mixed evenly. So this is an example of a solid solution. Okay, here's another one I wanted to show you. My husband um, has decided he kind of likes these lately. He likes the bubbliness of it. And it says on it, it has no calories, no sweeteners, no sodium. 
but I know it's a mixture. It's not just water, there are other things in it. So you'll notice all those bubbles. There's actually carbon dioxide gas that's been forced into the liquid mixture, and the same is true if you're drinking soda. So this is a mixture that includes a gas dissolved into a liquid, and that's true of any bubbly beverage that you might be drinking. I've given you six or seven examples of mixtures, so now come up with your own examples for the last couple of boxes, and we'll go over the things that go into a mixture. So first we have the solute. The solute is the thing being dissolved in. So these are my ground coffee beans. That would be the solute when I'm making iced coffee because the coffee is getting dissolved into the water. In the um, bubbly water, what we have as a solute for sure is carbon dioxide because it's gotten dissolved down into the water. A lot of people like to add sugar to their coffee, so sugar would also be a solute. Anything that's getting dissolved into something else is a solute, and usually there's less of the solute than the solvent. So we'll talk about the solvent next. The solvent is the thing doing the dissolving, and if you look at the coffee solution and the bubbly water solution, the solvent is the same. It's water in both cases. And 90 plus percent of the time with a liquid, your solvent is going to be water because that's what things are being dissolved into. So the universal solvent is water because most things will dissolve in water. In the case of my hummingbird food, it's also water. Well, what about the air outside? What is the solvent for air? I would say the solvent is nitrogen because most of the air is nitrogen and the other gases are dissolved in the nitrogen. So usually it's the thing that you have a bigger proportion of. Okay, we've already gone through solutions. On your paper, I used Kool-Aid as an example of a solution. But now we're gonna talk about concentration and concentration is mathematical. So for the definition of concentration, I would say it's the amount of solute over the total amount of solution. And so this is the volume of the solution. Concentrations are usually written as something per something else. So if you're weighing out a solid like salt, you might do grams of salt per milliliter of water. You could also, if you're using a liquid, you could do microliters. So in biomed, we often use our micropipetter and measure in microliters of liquid per milliliters of solution. Sometimes though, it's percent composition. So in the case of air, we do the percent of air that is oxygen, for example. That's how we do the concentration. And I'll be showing you some more examples of how to measure in just a moment. So I'm gonna make a simple solution right now. I'm going to take 10 microliters of this purple dye and I'm going to add it to 15 milliliters of water and pipette up and down to mix. So when you're figuring out concentration, you need to think about does your solute add meaningfully to the volume of your total solution? And in this case, I was adding such a small amount that the total volume of my solution is still 15. This didn't change it in any meaningful way. So to calculate the concentration that I just made, I would do 10 microliters per 15 milliliters. This is how you would set it up. And then you just take 10 divided by 16, which is 0 0.67 microliters per milliliter. But now imagine if we're adding a larger amount and we have to then figure it into the volume of the entire solution. So this time I'm going to do it differently. I'm starting out with 11 milliliters of my solvent and I'm going to add three milliliters of my solute. So I have a graduated pipette, let's do two. Oops, oh wow, that was messy. Good thing this is just food dye, huh? Well, it was, not precise because I dribbled some, but luckily the tube is also graduated. Let's just go all the way up to 15. And then I'll know that I added four milliliters because I was at 11 before and I added four more milliliters. Now the solute has changed the volume of my total solution. So I have to factor it in when I'm calculating. 
Okay, so this time my solute was four milliliters and my solution was actually my solute plus my solvent. So I had 11 milliliters of solvent and I added to it four milliliters of sol solute. So now what I'm actually gonna calculate is four milliliters divided by 15 milliliters. That's too much for me to do in my head, so let me just uh, calculate real quick with my calculator. Okay, 0 0.27, 0 0.27. Now you could write milliliters per milliliter, but then that's kind of weird. So at this point, I'll just turn it into a percent. So if I multiply a decimal times 100, it means it's 27% dyed. So I'm doing percent composition this time. Okay, we're wrapping it up. So I wanna show you how to um, understand a solution by modeling it at a molecular level. So I'm going to use the example of air in the solution. And I've already talked about the, air, the fact that air is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen, roughly. So what I'm gonna do first is use the black beans to represent nitrogen, which is our solvent because we have more of it and the other things are dissolving in it. And I'm going to go ahead and count out 78 black beans to represent the 78% of air that is nitrogen. Okay, I have my 78 black beans and I spilled nitrogen all over my table. Oh well, there's nitrogen all around us, so no biggie. I don't have to clean that up, right? Ha ha ha. Okay, now we're going to do the 21 white beans, which represent our solute, in this case, oxygen. We have 99 beans total. The last 1% of air is a mixture of lots of trace gases, and I'm not going to model it. But this does not yet represent our mixture because these beans are separated and any solution is a homogeneous mixture. So now to show our true solution, I'm going to gather up all the beans that I carefully counted out and put them into this cup. And we'll shake them up. And they're mixed fairly evenly, so that represents our solution. Okay, I am hoping this video gave you a solid understanding of solutions, and now I have a challenge for you. Your challenge is to make your own solution at home. You have to identify what your solute is, what your solvent is, and what your solution is, and you have to calculate its concentration. But you can do this using simple household things. You can use teaspoons and tablespoons, um, cups and yeah those are all the things if you had a kitchen scale you could do it with some kind of a powder and you could weigh it out but it's also okay to just mix liquid solutions together to make a new solution if you want or liquids together uh, to make a solution so that's your challenge there's a place on your handout to do some prep and some planning for it before you make your video explaining it If you wanna dive deeper into solutions, my next video will be about how to make a serial dilution and then calculate the concentration of each of your solutions as you dilute. I'll post that one within 48 hours and it will be math-tastic, so I hope you'll tune in. If you're a teacher watching this, I'm gonna post a video just for you about how to set up a mystery solution lab in your classroom to test students' knowledge of how to use micropipetters, how to calculate concentrations, and how to use critical thinking skills. That will also be posted in the next 48 hours. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.